good afternoon all uh, i am amit kumar shinde i welcome you all for this today's session and from last few lectures uh, we are uh, discussing the first chapter that is introduction to the plastics and uh, in today's session we are going to discuss the various testing methods that we are going to uh, check the plastic materials and uh, before starting this today's session first i will take the review of uh, previous sessions in previous session okay i will take the review of uh, last two sessions okay, we have started with this uh, uh, definition or you can say that exactly what is the meaning of plastic material that we have learned along with the few examples then we have discussed some general properties of the plastic material in classification of the plastic material in uh, basically two types that is thermosetting plastics and the thermoplastics then the properties of uh, thermoplastics properties of thermosets and advantages and disadvantages of thermoplastic material and thermosetting plastic materials uh, and we have discussed the comparison along with their uh, basic structure okay uh, then we have discussed the what is the meaning of additives in the plastics what is the effect of additives on the plastic material and different kinds of uh, additives that we are using to change the properties of the plastic material so that uh, that plastic material will, will become uh, more useful or uh, we can convert it into desired shape and size easily with uh, less processing cost and uh, less processing time and these are the additives we are using plasticizers fillers flame retardants and then uh, reinforcing agents stabilizers softeners or extenders and then colorants lubricants after this uh, <clears throat> we have discussed this concept what is the meaning of polymerization for understanding that polymerization uh, we first discuss the concept of monomer then polymer and after that we have discussed the polymerization in polymerization we have discussed its uh, different types according to the basic principle or depending on the how the monomer is converted into polymer or whether there is any kind of additional by product is uh, formed at the end of that process we have discussed the addition polymerization then condensation polymerization and uh, then further uh, sub classification or sub division of this uh, addition polymerization into homo polymerization co polymerization and craft polymerization and then along with this we have discussed three different types of co polymerization that is a, a random alternating and block co polymerization and the one uh, special type is there and that we have discussed uh, that is the, your uh, coordination polymerization in this way in previous session we have discussed this part a basic introduction of the plastic basic classification and then the polymerization method along with its brief classification okay then in today's session we are going to discuss the how we are doing the testing of the plastic material like in uh, in previous semester in metallurgy subject we have discussed the testing methods for metals and their alloys in that we have discussed destructive testing method non destructive testing method what is the meaning of destructive testing method or what is the basic difference between destructive and non destructive testing method in destructive testing method whichever specimen we are testing it may get damaged or its service life may get reduced during the destructive testing and examples of destructive testing are tensile testing that we have conducted in our uh, diploma lab we have conducted that tensile testing i think you have uh, joined through the online mode at that time tensile testing we have conducted then impact testing also we have conducted okay Uh, then uh, hardness testing okay hardness testing we have used the rockwell and brinell's hardness tester which is available in our metallurgy lab okay then from non destructive testing method we have conducted dye penetrant or liquid penetrant test okay that is for different metals and their different alloys or it may be ferrous material or non ferrous material 
and their respective alloys. We are using that method. And in same way, which uh, methods we are going to use to check the properties of the uh, plastic material that we are going to discuss in this uh, today's session. And uh, here we are having this list that is tensile testing, flexural testing, impact testing, then tensile impact energy testing. Okay. Then flammability testing, electrical properties testing, quality control testing. Okay, uh, out of these uh, seven lists, uh, in your syllabus, we are having only this four tests. Okay, tensile testing, flexural testing, impact testing, and tensile impact energy testing. Then whichever testing we are using, uh, first we are going to discuss why we are conducting that test. Okay, why to conduct tensile testing? Then how it is conducted? And so what is the test procedure to conduct that particular test? Suppose we are using the flexural test. Then why uh, we are conducting flexural test means what will be the uh, your aim? What is your aim to conduct that test or what will be the expected outcome from that test? That you have to uh, first understand. And then after that, we will move towards the uh, how to conduct that test means its test procedure. And at the end, we will uh, discuss the uh, its results. Okay. And uh, here we are going to discuss these four tests tensile, flexural test, impact test, and tensile impact energy testing. And all these four tests we are going to discuss by consider or with respect to the plastic materials only. Okay. Please don't get confused when you are uh, <coughs> testing of the metals and testing of the plastic materials. In metallurgy, we have discussed testing of the metals and their alloy. Here we are going to discuss the testing of plastic materials. Somewhat the test procedure will be same. Test procedure will be same, but what will be the difference? Difference will be basically in the test uh, specimen preparation. Whichever specimen we are preparing for conducting that test, that uh, specimen preparation will be in the different way and how it is done that we are going to discuss uh, one by one. So let's start with this uh, first, that is the tensile testing. Now, <clears throat> this is the short summary of that uh, tensile testing. So before going through this test, uh, let's uh, start with one, I will show you one uh, animation or small video where uh, this method is explained in very uh, short way, okay? Can you connect through? All are uh, requested to uh, join to online mode. Okay, first uh, is it audio now? Please check uh, whether it is audible.
आवाजच येत नाही मला येतो येतो हा प्लीज लेट मी नो वेदर वॉइस इज ऑडिबल ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स वेदर दट वीडियो वॉइस इज ऑडिबल wait please wait
okay i will repeat this part okay that same slide i have added here also okay now to conduct the pain child test first you should understand why we are conducting it okay means that is our aim so uh, this is uh, one of the most commonly used mechanical testing method and by measuring the force uh, required to elongate the specimen what we are doing in this tensile testing what we are doing exactly we are measuring the force required to elongate the specimen to the breaking point okay and material properties we are determining now to conduct this tensile test initial first step is your or initial step is to do the specimen preparation this kind of specimen is prepared okay dumbbell shape dumbbell shape specimen is prepared and for the plastic materials we are following these standards okay astm d638 means in this uh, specimen preparation dimensions will be mentioned there and whichever material you want to test that material is taken in this dumbbell shape form Oh, okay, dumbbell shape or dumbbell form, and then what we are doing? We are fixing it in this UTM universal testing machine. Okay, from both ends we are fixing it, and just we are pulling it from both ends. Means tension is created here. This is your whichever specimen you have created. That specimen is fixed here, and from two ends we are pulling it. and we are creating tension in that plastic material and we are going to uh, what we are going to observe here what will happen now this test procedure or steps i have highlighted here in the next diagram here you can see clearly okay this is the utm this is your specimen in the mill shape form and we are applying the tension or we are just pulling it from both ends then what will happen step by step this procedure will occur okay as we are pulling it from both ends elongation will take place in the specimen and one stage will occur here neck formation will start neck okay one notch will be formed there and after further uh, application of force or due to more tensile force we can say that at the end the the particular material or your test specimen will get breaked into two parts okay this step is neck formation stage and this is your breaking point and depending on the test results okay for each i uh, means gradually we are increasing the load and for each increased load we are calculating the uh, whichever dimensional changes are occurring means how much is the change in the length how much is the change in the area of the used specimen that we are calculating okay and at the end uh, at the different conditions we can calculate the uh, our tensile strength of that material how we are going to calculate the tensile strength stress that material can withstand before breaking or without breaking means before the actual breakage of the component whichever stress it is able to carry that will be the tensile strength of that plastic material that property can be determined with the help of this universal testing method okay so this is the tensile testing that we are conducting on the plastic material and these are the steps okay this is the diagram this is universal testing machine diagram and these are the steps gradually we are applying the load here okay step by step as load is increasing elongation is more okay length of the specimen is increasing and diameter is reducing here you can observe okay length is change length is increased diameter is reduced when again load is in uh, we are increasing the load then again elongation will happen and diameter will be reduced okay 
so and at the end that component will be ready okay so these are the stages to conduct the uh, tensile testing method and to find out the tensile strength okay okay this is the uh, standard tests uh, specimen preparation these are some dimension mentioned okay you can use these dimensions so but whichever section you want whichever material you want to check that material you have to cut or you can do the injection molding in the desired dimension okay this is the dog bone or dumbbell shape okay now here thickness you have to take Uh, under the fourteen millimeter, this thickness, thickness should be at the center. At the center, thickness should be less than fourteen millimeter. Okay. Uh, then again, the steps they have mentioned: load the specimen into tensile grips. Okay. Then gradually we are increasing the speed of application of the load, and up to the breakage we are observing it, and we are for each step. we are calculating the change in the length change in the length change in the area and at that particular point of breakage we will calculate the tensile strength so this is the tensile testing method now the second testing okay these are different uh, <coughs> standards which we are using this is astm d638 american society for testing of materials from that we are getting this Uh, standards to prepare our specimen to conduct the required test now suppose whichever plastic material we want to test it is present in the form of a thin film okay for example our polyethylene material from which we are manufacturing the polyethylene carry bags it is very thin then how to check its tensile strength so for checking the tensile strength of the thin plastic material we have to refer the different standards that standards are given by the astm that is american society for testing of materials now for that uh, we are having different standards and it is named by or uh, the code will be like this astm d882 okay here we can check the tensile strength of thin plastic films which are having thickness less than 1 mm less than One millimeter thickness. Here we can check the its tensile strength. Now this is the diagram uh, of that testing machine. You can see here we are going to fix our film, plastic film, for which we want to do the testing. Okay, load your sample into your grips. These are the grips. Uh, then here uh, some uh, means automatic. so automation will be there just you have to enter the dimensions uh, which we are using and at the end uh, it will apply some load and it will or it will show some results giving the tensile strength of that plastic film okay what you, you have to remember here we are using different standards for conducting the tensile testing of the some uh, thick thick plastic material and if the plastic material is having thickness less than 1 mm we are using different standard and it is uh, shown by different codes astm d882 for thin films and astm d638 for thick plastic material if thickness is more than 1 mm then we can directly go for this so in this way we are conducting the tensile testing now what are the advantages of tensile testing whichever data we are getting from that uh, tensile testing okay that we can use <clears throat> that can be used for determining the uh, whichever design procedure is required then again that same data we can use it in the uh, cost reduction of the material to get the suitable processing method okay as we are knowing the properties we can go for the suitable processing method okay
why it is uh, very much necessary to select the suitable processing method because when we are able to select the suitable processing method then we will end up with the high quality product with less processing cost and uh, less uh, processing time then this is the next testing this is the second testing method this is flexural testing of the plastics okay now what is the meaning of flexural testing the flexural strength of a material it is an ability to resist the deformation under the load okay suppose this is your plastic material okay i will show it here this is the plastic material and it is supported from these two ends okay and exactly at the center if load is applied okay then it will provide some resistance for the deformation due to that load that will be considered as the flexural uh, strength of that plastic material i will show you that with the help of a diagram okay in this way this is your plastic material and at two ends we are providing support and exactly at the center we are applying the load we are applying the load then whichever resistance is provided by this specimen or plastic material for the deformation due to this load that will be considered as flexural strength of that plastic material okay this is the uh, you can say this is the standard uh, the diagram that we are how we are conducting the flexural testing means at two ends support will be provided and exactly at the center load is applied okay yeah, this will be considered as the flexural strength ability to resist the deformation under the load it will be considered as flexural strength now uh, for the materials that deform uh, significantly but they do not break okay they are deforming but they are not breaking means some slight bending will occur slight bending will occur at at both end support is there rigid support is there and at the center we are applying the load some bending will may occur there so uh, you can say that uh, the load at the or it is typically measured at 5% of deformation or strain of the outer surface and it can be considered as the flexural strength of that material then another property that we can determine by this flexural testing uh, is the stiffness okay and that stiffness stiffness of the plastic material and that stiffness is calculated in the form of flexural modulus okay and what is the stiffness or flexural modulus ability of the material to bend ability of material to bend without breaking it does not break when you apply load it will just bend this ability of bending under the application of load okay due to application of load it will bend which our material is under test okay that will be considered as the stiffness or flexural modulus okay depending on this flexural modulus we can decide whether that material is flexible or whether it is stiff material when the flexural modulus is high that material is stiff and when the flexural modulus is less we can consider that material is more flexible means easily it can carry more load whenever uh, stiffness is less stiffness less as in term whenever stiffness is less it will carry more load stiff means uh, it is similar to the brittleness you can say if more stiffness is there with lo less load it will get break are you getting this point if more stiffer material is there it will carry less amount of load and less stiffness is there then it will carry the more load okay means it will bend if it is having less stiffness it will bend and if more stiffness is there instead of bending it will 
get broken in parts are you getting this if you are having any confusion you can ask me now okay uh, one more uh, video i have added here okay if you are having any query please ask me i'll wait for one minute here okay uh, now i am starting one small uh, video on how the flexural test is conducted and uh, what is the output of that test okay one very short video is there uh, two minutes video you can please listen carefully
So for more information, oh. Okay. I think uh, from this uh, video, uh, it is very much clear that how the flexural testing is conducted and uh, how, what will what is the output from that flexural testing. Okay, we are able to at the end of that flexural testing, we will be able to find out flexural strength of the material. Okay, means ability to, uh, to pro or you can say that uh, resistance provided by the material uh, to the deformation due to the load. And ability to bend that will be your flexural modulus. Means from this flexural testing, what we are getting flexural strength of the plastic material and a flexural modulus. From flexural modulus, we can decide uh, this stiffness. Okay. So this is the second test. After this second test, we will move towards the third test, uh, that is the impact testing. Okay. This is the impact testing. Now for the impact testing here, I think we have conducted the, whichever test procedure is there for the uh, metals we have used. Okay, We have uh, conducted this uh, uh, impact testing for mild steel bars. Okay. This test procedure is same we can use for the plastic material. Very small change will be there and that is related to the specimen preparation and how that specimen preparation is done. For understanding that, I have collected this table. Here, uh, we can check which impact testing method is used for metals and which impact testing is used for the uh, plastic material. and which di dimensions will be there for the preparation of the standard specimen. So if you refer to the very right corner of this screen or uh, the rightmost column here, IZOD impact testing. Okay. For the plastic material to conduct the impact testing, we are using this IZOD impact testing. And here, whichever test specimen is there, we are creating a V notch. Okay, V-shaped notch will be created and whichever test specimen is there, it is placed vertically and that notch will be facing towards the direction of the pendulum or from the striking direction. And dimensions are mentioned here. This, these are the standard dimensions here. Please refer, these are, this is very important. In this, ISO, you have to write like this or your answer will be like this. For plastic materials to conduct the impact test, we are using IZOD impact testing method. And whichever specimen we are pre preparing, its dimensions will be like this 64 by 12.7 by 3.2 millimeter. So these are the standard dimensions. And V shaped notch will be created. And we are fixing that specimen vertically. And the direction of the notch will be facing towards the pendulum. This is the standard procedure for the specimen preparation and that same specimen preparation dimensions are mentioned here. The standard specimen is prepared according to the ASTM standards and these ASTM standards are ASTM D256. Okay, why I am telling you the standards? If in situ examination is there, then they may ask you the standards in the MCQ questions means uh, which uh, standard is used for conducting flexural testing of the plastic material, which standard is used for conducting the tensile testing, or which standard is used for conducting the impact testing, or which method uh, is used for conducting the impact testing of the plastic material. Options will be Charpy Char test, Charpy impact test, Izod impact test, and some other names tensile impact energy testing like this or none of the other or all of the other like this. So uh, you have to 
choose the correct answer here for the, for doing the impact testing of the plastic material we are using isod impact testing method and for this the, these are the standard dimensions of that specimen for plastic material okay both the dimensions i have mentioned for metal and plastic just uh, the plastic you have to remember this is just for your reference purpose i have added and the standard used is astm t 256 okay and uh, the this is the diagram i think you have already studied this in a diploma or in your first semester of metallurgy subject you have studied this okay this is your impact testing machine you can say or impact testing setup this is the pendulum okay now initially how this test is conducted first prepare the specimen in this standard dimensions first prepare it then make a notch after that v shape the notch you have to prepare in that specimen then after preparing okay here they have also mentioned the uh, whatever depth is required for that notch Okay, we shape the notch and its depth. All dimensions are given here. Then, as per these standard dimensions, specimen is prepared. In that prepared specimen, we are fixing here with the help of this anvil. Here, we are fixing the specimen. Now, while fixing the specimen, whichever notch is created, that notch side will be facing this pendulum. Are you getting this? Okay, this is the notch. Suppose this is the notch, and pendulum is striking from this direction. Then notch will be facing the pendulum direction. Okay, in the isod test, in chart it is opposite. Notch is in the opposite direction to the impact or the pendulum or striking direction. Okay, it is in the this direction. then whichever notch is there it will face the strike of that pendulum got this this is very important factor you will get confused between isod and chart in isod test whichever notch is prepared while fixing that specimen in the anvil that notch should face the striking direction of that pendulum okay then initially here this pendulum uh, Uh, with we are holding it then we are measuring this initial height of this pendulum then after fixing the specimen standard prepared specimen we are releasing this pendulum then it will strike on that specimen and uh, it will swing that hammer or pendulum will swing towards other end and whichever height is reached initially only you have to calculate okay that height here it will be marked at h2 here it will be marked as h2 then uh, with the help of this h values using uh, your potential energy formula this will be your initial energy and this will be the final energy from this height values and we are calculating and we are taking the difference that will be your calculated value of the impact energy from uh, the initial position of the pendulum and final position of the pendulum or the hammer okay this will be mg h1 and this is mg h2 and we are simply taking their difference okay in this way we can calculate it with the help of position of the hammers initial position and end position and another value we can get with the help of this pointer with the help of the pointer from this scale we will get the value impact energy value okay are you getting this and the, what is the meaning of this impact energy energy stored in that particular material or ability to absorb the energy by that material due to the sudden impact when force is applied suddenly ability or amount of energy absorbed before failure here material will get break and before that breakage whichever amount of energy is absorbed it will be indicated by this pointer okay 
from the scale you can get that or you can calculate it from the initial position of hammer and final position of hammer what this in this way we are calculating the impact energy of that plastic material and for the plastic material we are using isod impact test okay and these are standard dimensions and astm uh, d256 standards we are using 256 okay got it if you are having any difficulty uh, in this uh, impact testing please let me know if you are having any difficulty please put that in the chat box otherwise i will move towards the uh, last testing method okay i will complete it in today's session only only last testing method is remaining after that in next session we will discuss the application why uh, why it is necessary to finish in one session because tests are linked okay means now we have completed three testing methods tensile testing flexural testing and impact testing the last testing method is combination of tensile and impact it is very simple just whichever dimensional or specimen preparation part is there that you have to remember uh, remaining the procedure will be same as that of your tensile testing method and impact testing method okay now i will move towards the tensile impact energy testing of the plastic okay now this tensile impact energy test measures the amount of force okay amount of force needed to break a specimen under the tensile load what we are doing here okay and simple impact energy testing we have prepared standard specimen with a notch and we have fixed it in the anvil and we have applied the sudden force now in this tensile impact energy what we are doing whichever specimen is there first initially or first or initially what we are doing we are creating tension in this specimen by pulling it from both ends okay we are creating the tension and we are applying the impact force this is the combination this is tensile impact energy testing this is the combination what we are doing here this tensile impact energy test measures the amount of force needed to break a specimen under the high speed tensile loading specimen is under tension condition and we are applying the sudden force and that energy is calculated and now here we are using the standard ASTM D1822 this is the standard outline procedure for uh, conducting this tensile impact energy testing method for the plastic material uh, and this ASTM D256 this we have used for impact testing of plastic material only for calculating the impact energy and for calculating the tensile impact energy ASTM D1822 this test procedure we are going to use then the test procedure here i have highlighted in few point the thickness and width of the test specimen is recorded means dimension then specimen is clamped to the cross head and placed into the pendulum then pendulum is released okay what we are doing initially test specimen is prepared then it is fixed in a cross head in the cross head means we are pulling it from both end that is your specimen is in the tension condition means this will be your specimen and we are pulling it from both ends okay that will be the specimen under tension condition and we are releasing pendulum from other end okay then pendulum is released and allow to strike on the anvil breaking the specimen and the tensile impact energy is recorded so this is the tensile impact energy of the plastic and uh, here this is the in this slide i have mentioned the standards used for specimen preparation related to the dimensions okay this is the astm d1822 
here two types of specimens we can prepare long specimens and short specimens okay here for the long specimen that is type l specimen and type s specimen the different dimensions are used that is mentioned here then whichever data is recorded okay tensile impact energy is recorded from the apparatus directly and the corrected tensile impact energy is calculated as a scale reading okay minus a friction correction plus the bounce correction factor okay It means these are some uh, theoretically calculated value for that you have to use these formulas and some values you will get it from the practical okay so this is not the part just i have added for the information okay so these are the machines uh, used for uh, your tensile impact uh, energy testing pendulum impact tester or uh, tmi impact tester okay so in this way uh, we have completed these uh, testing me methods you can okay please just if you are having any query please uh, write that query in the chat box or uh, you can write your roll number in the chat box for your attendance if you are having any query you can ask that if you are having any query please let me know okay this is the setup you can see this is the setup you can drop your attendance in the chat box and this is the setup for the tensile impact tester okay this is tensile impact tester or pendulum impact tester Okay, here. Specimen is fixed there, and we are applying the. Okay, one cross head will be there, and it is pulled from both end, and pendulum uh, sudden strike will be applied. Okay. so if you are having any difficulty in this uh, testing methods okay, in today's session we have completed uh, four testing methods tensile testing method flexural testing method impact testing method and tensile impact energy testing method okay we have discussed these four tests with their test procedure and uh, their uh, results or their outcomes okay Okay, this is tensile impact tester. Okay, next session I will collect, uh, try to collect the different diagram. Okay. Uh, I think it is little bit complicated. We are not able to see it clearly how it is occurring. I will come with the simple diagram. Okay, next session I will repeat this part and I will show you another diagram so that uh, you can understand it clearly. Okay, now I think time is over. and take the attendance okay. 51 51 60 51 61 okay now you can leave you can leave now this uh, session is 
i am stopping this session you can leave now and you can continue with your remaining session at 3:30 pm next session will start thank you thank you for attending the session